we're here to meet uh, Michael Coleman, the owner of Go Studios, School Creative, uh, Vancouver Actors School, and Vancouver Young Actors. He's been a mentor to me and a lot of other people too, so uh, let's go see what he has to say. Where are you from? Did you grow up in Vancouver? In I, am, uh, I am born in Burnaby, so I was born at Burnaby General, same hospital as Michael J. Fox and Michael Buble. Technically, I'm from the Green Timbers area. I think my generation really helped give uh, Surrey its original reputation. Sometimes we wear it as a badge of honor. Sometimes we apologize, yeah. but uh, but yeah, no, I come by my roots honestly, and then I've spent the last uh, seven or eight years living between Los Angeles and North Vancouver. Why acting? When when did you first get into acting? Was there a player or a film that you saw? I'm like, oh, I want to do that kind of thing. What? When? What age were you when you first decided? I've always done crazy voices and tried to mimic some of my favorite animated or, or live action heroes. When I was, I was bullied a little bit in junior high, uh, so I found incredible comfort in, in the arts. So I think it was always something I really loved and it allowed me to affect people and encourage them to think. And the more I did that, uh, the more I fell in love with who I was becoming because of how I was able to affect people. And the reality is I didn't know it was a real thing. Who was your inspiration? to kind of push forward, to do this as a full-time profession. The person that I would probably consider my greatest hero of all time is Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Charlie Chaplin, without question. Mm -hmm. I loved the audacity, the audacity when they created United Artists to say, let's not let other people control our fates. Let's not let the money or the studios dictate what we do. What if the artist became the studio? What if we made the decisions? What if we also were the ones who got to green light or, or red light a project and all these sort of... So for me, that fascination, that, that audacity to go to, you know, Fairbanks and Pickford and all these, I, I just say, hey, what if we did it? I like to think that he heavily influences the decisions I make to this day. How does an actor get into the industry here, especially in Vancouver? Find mentors who have the career you want. Yeah. So my advice is, Find the person who does the, has the career you want to do. What do you want to do? Like, you know, I look at some of my heroes now. Like, I like a Simon Pegg, for example. I like somebody who's not afraid to work mainstream, write their own stuff, have a few different branches yeah. out there. Yeah. I love that idea. If that's who you like, then see if Simon will take 10 minutes. And if you can't get Simon, find somebody who's Simon Pegg like. And now it's more, it's easier now than ever to get a hold of somebody. It, well, that's exactly it. Yeah, I, like in the Twitterverse, like even me myself, I'm blown away. Like I, the childhood actors that I grew up watching, I talk to all the time now. I just, if I want to talk to them, I tweet them and then yeah. they tweet me back exactly. and I have dialogue and I'm like, that's insane. 20 years ago or 30 years ago, 40 years ago, or even 10 years ago even. The performers were removed from society. Mm -hmm. Now we're thrust in it. Like, I, so I've, I've been spending the last six years on a show called Once Upon a Time. I, on a regular basis during an episode, William Shatner, Captain Kirk himself, will talk to me about what my character's doing in the middle of an episode. I'm like, I've Bill, seen one of give me tweets. a minute. I've seen one of his tweets too, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, Bill, I don't write the show. I'm just, I do what they tell me to do. Yeah. It blows my mind how connected we are and what the opportunities are. I've also grown to understand that as a community, the acting community, those people that are really in it for the right reasons, Everybody that's come before you is more than happy to send the elevator down and help you up. Everyone starts off somewhere and tries to get somewhere and if the more we help each other in this community, there's no competition. One of my childhood acting idols is an actor named Steve Zahn. Yeah. He was in the bar. Yeah. He sat across from me, started buying me scotch, we had a dialogue. I said, hey, I own an acting school, would you mind everything you just said to me with less alcohol? <laughs> Could you, could you come say that to the students? Because I say similar things, but it would mean so much more coming from you. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I'm not on set till tomorrow afternoon. Wait, pick me up in the morning, I'll come by at lunch and we'll have a chat with the kids. Like, he's a major movie star. Exactly. And, and the fact that he would do that. But almost all of them will. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is don't be afraid to ask. But also understand that if you're going to ask somebody like that to bad. give you that, <laughs> you need to be ready. You yeah. need, you can't have just started today. You need to have been training every day, working every day. When you do the work, then you have permission to ask and you will find that almost all of them will say yes. Well, that was a great segue because you happen to own a school here. I do. Um, can you please talk about the school and different um, areas of the school and what you do here? Um, so I own, uh, I own School Creative, Institute of the Arts, and the concept of the school is based on my own journey in terms of this is a school where everybody who teaches here works professionally at a high level. So all of our instructors are 
actors who actively are working and in, 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 in performing and auditioning in, in television. We have an animation department, we have 2D and 3D animation, and all of the instructors are actively working on some of the biggest titles in the world right now. We have a video game programming uh, class, we offer uh, video game design, electronic arts, Ubisoft, like some of the biggest names in the end. Again, everybody is willing to come back. And that's the thing that I learned early in my development is that there are all these working professionals who want to give back. So we created a school of working professionals who want to give back. You know, we have a photography department with some of the, uh, you know, mo some of the most prestigious photographers in the nation teach in this department. Um, we have a screenwriting course with a bunch of people who, well, what do you do for, for money and how do you eat? I write movies and television shows. And what else do you do? Well, sometimes I come to school creative and I teach other people how to make make TV shows or make movies and then they can feed themselves and provide shelter with that money. So that's something that we do. This is a school owned and operated by artists. Well, I know firsthand that everybody that teaches here, including yourself, walks the walk. Yes. And talks the talk. You got a great thing going on. We also own uh, Go Studios that we operate out of this facility, which casts various commercials and television series and feature films. So this is also a fully functioning uh, studio, uh, a, a professional environment where students are in the hallway with those who are auditioning literally every single day for the jobs that they want to go for once they graduate. And um, you know, we, we anticipate over the next three to five years to growing this to also having an animation studio in here and also having a game studio in here. Putting all of our students in an environment where, no, the expectational, uh, sorry, the expectation is a professional work environment because that's who you share your space with. You share a kitchen with professionals who are doing what you aspire to do. You share restrooms with people who are doing what you aspire to do. So be respectful, be smart, watch what they do, learn what they do. Look how disciplined they are when they come here. Uh, what are some guests you've had here uh, in your business? Uh, well, we've been really lucky. Uh, we have a fantastic guy named Peter DeLuise, who's coming quite a bit, and uh, he goes all the way back to the 21 Jump Street days. He's a big part of Stargate. I mean, he's a big part of everything. I mean, Pete's had an, an incredible career. He's been really um, generous with the school. We've, we've had almost every major um, film, television, or literary agent come through here. We've had various movie stars come through. We've had most of the cast of Once Upon a Time come in. We've had, you know, Colin O'Donohue, Josh Dallas, Sean McGuire, uh, Michael Raymond James, Rebecca Mader, Lana Perea. We've had a lot of them come through these hallways. Lee Ehrenberg. Some of them have taught classes. Some of them have done read-throughs. We've had Jennifer, Jennifer Morrison's been here. It feels more like a family. So we've been able to get some really, really incredibly cool people through here. What's your favorite Vancouver pastime when you're not working? I am a diehard Vancouver Canucks fan. I have season's tickets. I uh, have been very fortunate to become a part of uh, the Vancouver Canucks Alumni Association, so we do a lot of charitable gigs. I uh, help coordinate a, um, a charity game once a year where it's uh, members of uh, Vancouver's film and television industry, and we're getting a little bit more Hollywood as the as the word gets out, and, uh, and we play against uh, former Vancouver Canucks, and we d uh, donate all of the money and all of the uh, different resources we're able to bring in to the downtown Eastside Women's Center. What, what's going on in your world, Mike? So I've just completed six years on uh, Once Upon a Time. Uh, season seven starts in a few weeks, so we're hoping uh, that the dwarfs return, but that's still, we're in early talks, so we're figuring that out. This past spring, I was really fortunate to play Dr. Watson in a, in a Sherlock Holmes film. It was a, a story by Stephen King, and then it was converted into a feature film, and that's coming out. I did a movie called Cop and a Half uh, last fall with Lou Diamond Phillips, and it's a sequel to an old Burt Reynolds movie, and I'm really super excited about that. We have a lot of fun with that coming out. Uh, I write and star in a show called Hipsterverse. Uh, we're just in the middle of um, talking to broadcasters uh, domestically and in Los Angeles for a season two. And then I've started a production company called Rebel West Pictures, um, ironically with one of my high school buddies that uh, I had my cable access show with back in the 11th grade. And, and that's the 3017 project you were working yeah, on? Yeah, 3017. Okay. So I've got 3017 coming out. So that's a feature film that uh, will be our uh, first big production that uh, Rebel West Pictures does. Uh, we we, we uh, did a co-production with a company called Hadron Films, who also is heavily involved in the uh, hipsterverse and they've become a co-production uh, partner in that as well. Well, Mike, well, thank you so much for you know having us here, John and I. Yeah, and, thank uh, you very much. Taking the time and uh, I really, really appreciate it. I'm sure our viewers would appreciate the, 
the information you've given today. And uh... thanks for having me. What's your story, Vancouver? Thanks again, Vancouver, YouTube, the rest of the world, our many followers. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Just click that little red button at the bottom of the screen and the bell beside it. Have a great day. Thank you.